Hello, how is it going? It's Pixie's Planet. This is my first long form video, so I apologize if it is trash, honestly. This is going to be quite different than what I've done before, but I thought it would be fun to kind of share my experience of being in Iceland. Because people are always asking, what did you do? Why haven't you shown us videos? Why haven't you shown us anything? So I thought I would just make a video on it, basically. So here we are. I do kind of need to think about where I went and how I went to different places, but the idea is that I'm gonna overlay the content from it, really. Um, so I went last week, which was very exciting, and oh, for the main majority of it, it was absolutely beautiful. It needs to be said, I am not a city person. I am an outdoors person. All I do is do stuff outdoors. So my trip was incredibly outdoor heavy. I took two pairs of trousers, one pair that I was wearing and one pair for spare. I took loads of woolen items, like woolen leggings and woolen shirts. And I took no pretty clothes. Everything was practical. I didn't take anything like this. It was all t-shirts and practical clothes and lots and lots of woolly socks and lots and lots of woolly gloves. So if you came here for like an exploration of Reykjavik and an exploration of the city, you are in the wrong place. So I wanna cover a couple of things when I went to visit Iceland for a week. And that is the kind of track that I took. So I'll kind of go through day by day, but also where the good places to go and where the least least good places are to go. None of it was bad. It was just some of them were better than others. But what to expect with the people and what to expect with the cost of everything because Iceland is not cheap. So first of all, we're just going to go through my kind of week and what I did. And then at the end, I will give some thoughts and some criticisms on the different prices of things and other options that perhaps you could do. Um, bear in mind that I was originally going to go on a tour but the tours worked out really expensive and I thought I could just pay for it as I go and just drive. Firstly, leaving Heathrow. Took ages, everything got, all the flights got cancelled going out to Reykjavik because there was a horrendous windstorm that was 100 miles per hour or kilometres per hour winds which meant that it was just, you couldn't, you couldn't land. And we got our flight pushed to the afternoon, absolutely fine. And when we landed, we still couldn't get out of the plane because it was so windy that you couldn't put the, the gear on the side of the plane to be able to get off the plane safely. And I think we were taxied for about two and a half hours, which was kind of crazy, kind of difficult, especially when you know, you've had your flight pushed and stuff like that. But the captain, was amazing and he came and he spoke to everybody on the flight and was just like, you know, we are what we are, weather's weather. We also found out that there was another flight from uh, America that had been grounded for 12 hours in the taxi. 12 hours! They were running out of food, they were running out of water, but there was literally nothing anybody could do because nobody could safely board or onboard the plane which made me feel a lot better about two hours so we were waiting for them to really disembark and then we were able to disembark unfortunately it meant that we missed pretty much a whole day um waiting for that because originally the plane was meant to land at half 11 and i think we got off the, like our plane disembarked at 7 p.m so then go and get the car that always takes ages because again it was utter chaos. Loads of flights had been cancelled. People had been stranded. And yeah, it was in the middle of the worst weather possible. So getting the car, absolutely fine. It was very dark because there's only five hours of sunlight in Iceland in the winter time. And you can really tell <laughs> it was very dark. And obviously it was very unfamiliar and the weather wasn't great. There was really high winds and there was also lots of snow because Iceland. So getting the car was actually really easy. We, we used a, a company called Fair Car 
And in this time of year, I'd really recommend just going for the all-in insurance because it really does make you feel more at ease if anything happens. But again, you're not really allowed to go down the south island, south side of the island when it's really windy because of the damage that it can cause. Which kind of was not where we were going. So that was fun, <laughs> I'm joking. So we weren't going there. We were going actually above Reykjavik, I'm pretty sure, into a, yeah, it was above Reykjavik and it was in a tiny little shepherd's hut in the middle of like this campsite, which was absolutely gorgeous. Shared bathroom, so you had to walk across the snow to go to the bathroom and you had to walk across the snow. I don't even think there were showers. I don't remember seeing showers, but also we were, were literally there for 12 hours maximum. So got, that, got there and literally went to sleep. It took like an hour and a half, two hours drive to get from the airport to get to the hut straight to sleep the next morning was beautiful it was still and the sun was rising and it doesn't rise until 10 30 and it was just absolutely phenomenal it was so gorgeous but unfortunately we were on to the next thing we were on to the golden circle which is like a route around iceland which is a lot of people go to because of all the popular touristy spots so duh we had to go so <laughs> lots of waterfalls lots of beautiful viewing points a beautiful kind of like national park where you could walk around and it was just covered in snow it was gorgeous and you could walk over and you could see these beautiful little churches and a little house and the lakes were frozen over it was just pure winter wonderland vibes it was chef's kiss beautiful it was some of the most beautiful things that I've seen and again you can just walk around and it is just beautiful it's such a oh it's just such a phenomenal landscape and you can see me walking around like a bit of a turd because you know what, what else am I gonna do <laughs> I don't know how to take aesthetic videos okay you're gonna see a lot of me just walking and waving because for some reason that's all I can do that's my that's my signature move all this but I just didn't think that was appropriate every single day <laughs> And the day was kind of moving really fast and that evening we had booked to go and see a, uh, a secret lagoon. So drove over there um, and it was really nice. The water was so hot, like I know it's geothermal and I know, oh my god, it's going to be really hot. But it was like hot bath hot like when you step in the bath and you're like dang I don't know if I can handle this but it was beautiful so it was a fresh water lagoon which smell like sulfur so everything smells like farts so just bear that in mind but it is so warm I wish I'd taken water in because I was so hot and felt a bit funny afterwards because I'd had a really really hot basically had a really really hot bath um <laughs> And it was really cheap. It was like £10 to get in and you could stay there for as long as you wanted and you could get coffee, you could get tea. The tea in every part of Iceland, no offence Iceland, your tea is not good. As a British person, I had to bring my own tea again because it's just not nice. The coffee though, the coffee was actually really good. They did a good cup of coffee. It was there for a good couple of hours. Um, as the sun went down, which was really glorious, and then went to a old silo as the next accommodation. So this accommodation had like four rooms and an observation deck in an old silo. So it was absolutely beautiful going in. It was like concrete paradise, but it was all circular. It was very, very well done absolutely beautiful and the observation deck was gorgeous where you could see the northern lights unfortunately for the whole time i was there the weather was so awful and so overcast that you did not see any of the northern light you don't know what the weather's going to be like it is going to be so unpredictable that yeah you, you just can't you can't put, pin any of your hopes on it and everyone we spoke to was like why are you coming in january like it's like the worst time to go to iceland but it's just one of those things. I didn't want loads of tourists. I didn't, I wanted a lot, a lot more of a local experience and I also wanted to be able to do a lot more outdoorsy stuff, which I did, so. And then the next day got up. So a lot of these B&Bs like, will say, do not offer breakfast. Okay, so just bear that in mind. 
After we packed up and went from the old silo, uh, started traveling towards our next destination, which was Vic. And Vic is the very far east, it's really far. Is it east? Yes, it's definitely east. And on the way, kind of just stopped at any point that kind of felt interesting, um, because I feel like that's the best way. Stopped a lot of time to get food because, you know, food is a must and being a vegetarian I found that actually it was quite hard for me to eat there because obviously they're a huge fishing community, huge meat community because of that's what's accessible to them on their island. So if you are a big fish person and you're a big meat person, you will find so many good meals for yourself. Uh, I just kind of lived on like <laughs> cheese rolls basically. Um, but that was absolutely fine by me. I knew that I wasn't gonna have the most accessible form of food. Totally okay, I took vitamins every single day. Uh, so when we we saw something really cool, it was like this beautiful like rock, like wooden building and it said lava on it. And I was like, we've gotta go see, gotta go see this lava center. So you learn about how the, the island of Iceland was formed and how the different volcanoes can how they've influenced the landscape and there are so many volcanoes in Iceland. The volcano that at the very end of the trip that I visited only stopped erupting at the end of August uh, in 2022. So I will explain a bit more about that when I get there but it's a really nice like tourist center, it's a really nice information center, it's so fun and interactive. You can feel what it feels like to have an earthquake happen and feel what it feels like to see these kind of eruptions happening in real time, which is just a really fun experience. If you're not able to experience a eruption, obviously you probably don't want to be that near it, but there in Iceland, volcanoes are erupting all the time. Like every year or every two years, or every three years, there's another eruption. And it is quite amazing how quickly they it moves the landscape, but they adapt. I just find that so fascinating because they are incredibly hardy. Uh, people and animals, because they have horses and sheep and they are hardy as hell to be able to go through all of these different things. So from the lava center, carried on towards Vic. And I know full damn well I'm gonna butcher this name. So I think it's Seljaland Floss? Foss? So Foss? And it is a beautiful waterfall that was kind of encased in ice. And it just looked, it is just such a phenomenal thing to see such a majestic waterfall. Because obviously again, it's volcanic, it's a volcanic island. So there's just such a rugged landscape and you can see these kind of really stark differences in the landscape when it snows. And then later on during the week, it, it def a lot of it kind of melted away and it just unearthed this gorgeous kind of like troll like atmosphere I don't know how to explain it but you know the trolls from um Frozen <laughs> that's what it reminds me of I know that's kind of crazy um and then yeah carried on heading down towards Vic which has this beautiful black sand uh beach it's um absolutely phenomenal but the weather was garbage okay garbage it was in the middle and we drove so far we drove for like hours and hours and hours we saw this gorgeous gorgeous rainbow and it was like oh we're gonna go to the beach and i'm gonna pick up some stones because for some reason i don't know i'm a i'm a white girl i don't know what to tell you i like stones i like sand it was horrific it was so <laughs> the wind was so bad <laughs> But again, my fault for being in Iceland in January whilst that I anticipate was going to happen. So a little bit of walking around, a little bit, but to be fair, it was kind of like, hey, let's go. So travelled out to another really secluded place where, where I was just outside of Vic. And there was like these two huts literally 15 kilometers from the nearest main road. It was just this gravel track for 15 kilometers. It was absolutely barbaric. And it was so flat, everything was flat. And it was like, oh, well, we're gonna be able to see for miles. But obviously we couldn't because the weather was bad. So 
Really, really lovely space, really lovely place to be, in the middle of nowhere, right by a river. It was just absolutely phenomenal. And that was it, that was the day. The next day I woke up and it was gorgeous and clear and you could see for miles, you could see the mountains and you could see, oh, it was just, it was just what I wanted. It's just what I needed to have a cup of tea and look at that. Oh, it was just, obviously I'm gonna show you clips, but, I can't, I can't tell you how, how beautiful it was because it was just phenomenal and it was just so, they really undersell their price. It, it was so good. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I just think it's just amazing. So then on the way back, um, we're now going back towards Reykjavik uh, because there is a, basically a mountain, a glacier walk due the next day so we need to be near uh, Skaftafell which is a massive glacier um, which obviously you want to climb because why not <laughs> um, and with that you have to kind of head back so uh, stayed in like this beautiful guest house again in the middle of nowhere I really don't know I saw a couple of uh, waterfalls along the way but mainly just wanted to get into the middle of nowhere and just kind of relax and do nothing which is what happened absolutely amazing home amazing host got there super early so went for a walk around their countryside to see what their countryside was like because it was a lot more hilly and jagged than than the last time and <laughs> again another waterfall if you're gonna know anything about iceland is it has a lot of waterfalls it has a lot of waterfalls <laughs> uh so actually managed to climb pretty much the whole way up of it because of the way that it was in the rocks which was just so lovely and also tried to go to the bottom of it but that was really terrifying and I stopped again a really quaint guest house in the middle of nowhere where there was about five five families five people everybody is always really nice I've not I've not had I didn't have a bad experience when I was in Iceland at all which is just makes your life so much nicer and early day the next day to climb the glacier and if you know anything about me I will tell you now I can barely walk on a normal road okay I really suffer with balance I really suffer with I have really tight and sh short Achilles tendons like really tight and short Achilles tendons so I find that my legs when I walk tire really easily Especially when I'm walking uphill. So why did I book to go climb a glacier? I have no idea. And when I tell you this was the worst day for the weather, this was the worst day for the weather. It was hammering it down. I was wearing wool, wool, and a waterproof jacket. Wool trousers. And then oh, trousers over the top. Wool socks. Ugh. As soon as that got wet, that was it, it was game over. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't actually get wet until quite later on in the trip. So you left at nine, you had a tour guide. She was amazing. She was so lovely. She was from Greece. She was absolutely amazing. And she was so kind and so, yeah, lovely. You get a little harness, you get a little hard hat, and you get a little crampons so you don't slip on the ice. And you've got to do these little stompy, stompy actions like really push your feet in to be able to stay on top of this glacier because else you will slip and i know this because i slipped a lot because i am a very like dainty walker um not a flex i just am i can't tell you anything else um but you really have to slam these crampons into the ground and hard into the ground in order to make them you know stamp in and i suffered with that quite a lot so i did get dragged around quite a bit so really showing my outdoorsiness, huh? <laughs> but it was gorgeous. The weather was crap, absolutely crap. But it was gorgeous to see the glacier. It's really interesting to know how much the glacier has receded in the last 25 years due to climate change. That is always very impressive to me and horrific that we learn about this. Um, and in the last, you know, in my lifetime, things have, have changed so significantly. Um, and I found that really, really, really eye-opening. Um, and that finished about lunchtime, which was kind of nice. But yeah, you're soaking wet by then. You just kind of want to get changed. 
And unfortunately, a four hour drive was ahead of me where you had to go and drive all the way back to Reykjavik. Oh, hi. Hi, baby. I didn't realize you were gonna come. Ah, say hi. What is this? Is a mama break? Oh. Love you. I'm gonna be taking fur out of my teeth for the next two days. <laughs> the drive back was was horrific because it was such <laughs> such bad weather. But we managed to get to this beautiful guest house outside of Reykjavik. As I said, we didn't really go into the city, so I can't tell you what it's like. But this guest house was gorgeous. It was an old government building in the in the forties, and it just just oh, it's just so grand. It was just so beautiful, and the woman was so nice and really really inexpensive, really for what it was. And you had access to her kitchen and her bathroom, and yeah, it was fabulous. And then we come to Friday, which is the last day before we headed back, and it was kind of a bit more of a chill one. I. I didn't want to really push myself too much knowing that I was going to fly the next day and obviously the glacier walk was pretty intense for me. So we went to the Blue Lagoon, which I'm sorry if any of you actually like the Blue Lagoon, <laughs> but for me, it wasn't all that, like, it wasn't all that. I don't know. Maybe it's because it has been so overly commercialized now that the one, the water wasn't very warm. It was like really varying in temperatures, but it was like 30 degrees. It was like, it was warm, but it wasn't hot. And it is just like, I don't know. It just feels a bit of a cash grab now. Um, and not a lot of the locals go. No locals really go there. They always go to different ones, like the secret lagoons or the lagoons that are local to them or just to the swimming pools because they're heated as well. So, um, it's incredibly expensive for what you have and because it's a tourist attraction everything around it is very expensive so the food is expensive the drinks are expensive everything is expensive and for the comfort package i think it's 100 pounds each whereas the secret lagoon was like a tenner or was it 60 pounds each and then the secret lagoon was a 10 pounds so either way it really wasn't that great for the cost and you do get a mask and you do get a drink but then at the secret lagoon i got a drink anyway like I don't know. I felt like it was just a bit of a cash grab. It was a bit of a, like, take pictures. Everyone was taking pictures. Everybody was taking pictures. And it was a cold day. It was hailing. So the wind wasn't great. But it, everyone was taking pictures. Obviously, because you're at the Blue Lagoon. What else are you going to do, babes? I took pictures. Of course I did. But I try not to take pictures as soon as I get there. I like to enjoy myself for a bit and then take pictures, which is why in most of my pictures you see that I'm sweaty and my makeup is down my face or I'm a mess because I've because I've already enjoyed myself and then I've taken pictures and maybe that's not the right way around to do it I don't know but you can stay there for as long as you want but it kind of gets a bit boring because there's no like knowledge about the geothermal environment you get like a little blur but I would want more if I'm just kind of like swimming around and yeah I had so many questions and I couldn't, I couldn't ask anybody I should have asked them at the lava centre um, and then because I felt quite unfulfilled with that, I really wanted to see what was around the area because I knew there was a volcano, um, there was an active volcano, I think it was Melfur, which was like the, the, the volcano or the viewing point. So, drove to that and you have to pay parking everywhere in Iceland, totally makes sense because the roads are so good, don't mind. And it was about an hour walk up there and it wasn't, wasn't that far but it's so incredibly windy that actually that morning they were going to cancel the blue lagoon and they were also going to cancel anybody's ability to go to the mountain and to go up to the volcano because it was so incredibly windy thankfully by the time i got there she died down she hadn't died down that much okay it was very windy and actually getting pictures was really tough because <laughs> i felt like i was going to blow over but you could see this gorgeous like lava field, like this just tar of lava that's solidified and it is like force and it feels like coral, like it's incredible. And in places it's still steaming with how how hot it was. And honestly, if you can if you can go up to, if you can go up and see those volcanoes, I would recommend them because they are so fascinating to see how much they change the landscape. 
and it is just it's just it gives you that sense of awe that actually you're pretty small in the world and the world's just doing its own thing like it's just yeah it's just incredible it's really fantastic and it was a delightful way to end the trip did i think of iceland in the total five days that i was there i loved it i would go back again i would do a little camping trip or i would kind of go there in the summer where I could see a bit more of the stuff that I was not able to see because now I've seen the stuff, the touristy stuff, and I would kind of go back and do the stuff that nobody kind of does because I feel like that's the most interesting. Um, the only downsides is that obviously for a vegetarian I really struggled with food. You do have to drive everywhere or you have to get a tour. Um, I would recommend getting a tour if you don't drive. You just have to go to specific places. Um, and there's a few places that I saw that I wasn't really rated, was like the geysers and stuff like that. But I've seen geysers before, so I just kind of skip them, honestly. Um, and obviously, once you've seen a few waterfalls, you kind of run out of ideas. But I would like to go more to the highlands, maybe up to the north. There was a history of witchery centre that I, I wasn't able to see. Couldn't see any whales, couldn't see any puffins, couldn't see any sharks, anything like that, or dolphins, because it just wasn't the time of year. Um, so I would go back and kind of see all of those places. So there is still a wealth of things that I didn't get to do whilst I was there. Um, but I would go back with more of a focus of where I want to go and just be able to go, oh yeah, I solely want to go ne up north next time. I don't want to go to the south at all. I just want to do the north side. So I would definitely go back. What I've learned from this trip though is that to take food with you. <laughs> if you're a vegetarian, take food. Take protein bars take chocolate take snacks take whatever because you're gonna be in this of food basically everything is super expensive as i said food was incredibly expensive fuel was more expensive than the uk i spoke to my tour guide when i was going up the glacier and she said that when they have two weeks off it's cheaper for them to go to switzerland than to stay in Reykjavik. so i'm really glad i didn't choose to stay in Reykjavik. I'm glad I chose to travel around to more of the remote areas because they would have been more cost effective. And you need to be happy with seeing miles and miles of nothing because it's outside of people living in the cities. People don't really live everywhere else unless they're they kind of dotted around but there's not that much density of population and there's not that much of trees, there's not that much bushes because well the sheep have taken them down so yeah it's kind of like a lot not a lot of anything but you will see a lot of horses and you'll see a lot of uh beautiful animals and hopefully in the winter time you'll see, in the summertime you'll see a variety of different animals would i go back yeah of course i would i would miss out places like the blue lagoon i would miss out the tourist attractions I'm trying not to get caught up by the touristy stuff and just go back and see like the local iceland i think but yeah, I hope you found this video interesting. Honestly, it's a nice way just to showcase my footage because I always have so much footage that I never know what to do with. So if you liked it, let me know. And I hope to see you again when I do another video, which is probably going to be never. <laughs>